Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Dr. Mehmuna Azad. By profession, I'm a physiotherapist and today I'm going to deliver a lecture on the biomechanics of human skeleton articulation. This is the chapter from the biomechanics and the author name is Susan J. Hall. You can go through the book and identify what I'm going to teach today. So the first aspect of this is we are going to study joint function, its flexibility, its stability and the range of motion which is provided by different joints. So if we go through one example of it, we have one person who have injured knee and contrary to that there is another person who have normal knee. Obviously there would be dysfunctioning in the person who have injured joint or injured knee. So these are the characteristics which are related to flexibility, stability and the motion which we are going to study into detail. The first thing we are moving towards is joint architecture. So joint architecture can be divided or classified into multiple types. But today we are going to go towards the classification which is based on human movement. As the other classifications are being done on the structure, complexity, number of axes or geometry. But today we are going towards the human movement classification. So there are basically three types of joints. One is synarthrosis. The second one is amphiarthrosis and the third one is diarthrosis. Synarthrosis are those joints which are basically immovable one. And the second one which are amphiarthrosis, they are slightly movable joints. And the third one which are diarthrosis, they are freely movable joints. And all these categories have their subclassification. So coming towards the synarthrosis one, it has two types, sutures and syndesmosis. What basically happens in sin arthrosis, the sin arthrosis words has two meanings. Sin means together and arthron means joint. The joints which are basically together. That's why they are called immovable joint as they do not allow movement in their joints or they do not have little movement in their joints. And the first classification is sutures. As you can see the sutures of the skull. If we go into zoom, if we go into detail and zoom this, in this area you can see that irregularly grooved articulating bones, they are going to have a connection through fibers and these fibers then later are converted into a complete bones through ossification and periosteum continuation also occurs into this. Then moving towards the second type which is syndesmosis. Syndesmosis are those type of joints which are held together by a band and what that band is and where you can see that band its best example is mid radio ulnar joint. What is radio ulnar joint? The joint which is formed between the radius and ulna. If we can see here this is the radius and this is ulna. A fibrous band is present in between and this type of joint would be called as syndesmosis joint and its basic name is mid radio ulnar joint. So we are done with first classification which is immovable joint or synarthrosis. Then coming towards amphiarthrosis, it also have two types and amphiarthrosis means amphi on both sides and arthro mean joint. It means they are allowing a um, little kind or slightly movement across their joints and these two it has two classifications under which synchondrosis and symphysis come. What is synchondrosis and what is symphysis? Basically in synchondrosis they are held together by a cartilage and that cartilage its best example can be seen in sternocostal joint. Here you can see this is sternum and these are the ribs. The, uh, the joint formed between this sternum bone and these ribs is sternocostal joint and this is the type of synchondrosis as they are held together by a cartilage. Then symphysis. Symphysis is the other type of amphiarthrosis in which there is a thin cartilage and in between them there is a fibrocartilage and its example is intervertebral joint. As we all know that we have vertebrae in the center and the joints form between the vertebrae and the fibrocartilage or the disc which is present inside that intervertebral joint is of symphysis kind of nature. Then the last category is diarthrosis. Dia means 
through arthron main joint so diartrosis are those joint which are allowing free motion they are freely movable joints and it has six sub categories gliding hinge pivot condyloid saddle and ball and socket first of all gliding one in gliding type they are plain or arthrodial they have flat bones and non axial gliding occurs in this so if we go into its example these are carpal bones these carpal bones can be glided upside down and these are non axial gliding so these type of joints are called gliding joints and they are the sub type of diarthrosis and carpal bones are present in this region of our hand then hinge joint its example is interphalangeal joint the joint which is formed between phalanges these are the phalanges these are the phalanges and the joints formed between in between them is called interphalangeal joint what is the characteristic of this interphalangeal joint these are held together by strong collateral ligaments that's why they produce a hinge kind of motion the next category is that is pivot joint they allow one axis of rotation and what is that uh you might know about atlanto axial joint or proximal or distal radio ulnar joint we have studied the mid radio ulnar joint now coming towards proximal and distal radio ulnar joint this is this area is comprising proximal radio ulnar joint and this area is comprising distal radio ulnar joint and it allows one motion as you can see that this motion pronation supination pronation supination so these are basically pivot kind of joint then condyloid joint in condyloid joint we have one ovoid convex surface and opposite to that there is one concave surface one convex surface and opposite to that one concave surface and its example we can see that radiocarpal joint radiocarpal joint the radius is giving a concave surface while all these carpals in combination are giving a convex surface so this joint allow flexion extension adduction abduction and circumduction it is basically done in anatomical positions of flexion extension adduction abduction and circumduction all these movement are provided through this then comes saddle joint saddle joint is a joint where two bones are having s shapes s shape mean in one side of the bone a uh, one side of the joint there is one convex and one concave surface and similarly on the other side and this joint is formed on the carpal metacarpal of the thumb this joint formed out here at carpals and metacarpal this joint is known as saddle joint it is forming s shaped joint and it is allowing more range of motion rather than that of condyloid joint then the last category is ball and socket joint what are basically ball and socket joint ball and socket joint also have one convex surface and one concave surface and they allow three kind or three planes of the motion in which flexion extension abduction adduction and medial and lateral rotation both occurs and its best example is shoulder as you can see shoulder joint flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation lateral rotation and circumduction all three planes are being provided from this so one thing to remember is that these freely movable joints are actually synovial joints in last i would like to tell you what are basically synovial joints synovial joints are those kind of joints which have for example there is one bone it has its articular cartilage then comes another bone it has its own cartilage these two bone in union have a capsule which cover them and in between them there is synovial fluid 
synovial fluid is present inside and this fluid is providing lubrication and synovial joints are basically when we classify them separately according to number of axes there are three types of synovial joints uniaxial biaxial triaxial uniaxial are allowing 1 degree freedom biaxial are allowing 2 degree freedom and triaxial are allowing 3 degree of freedom so this was all about joint architecture and its classification based on human behavior thank you so much